Good morning, Legacy Church. Well, you're not awake yet. I understand. If you're watching at home, whether or whether you're here in person, we want to welcome you to worship this morning. My name is Brent. I have the privilege of being the pastor here. I'm going to give you a couple of quick announcements so that uh, you know what's going on in the life of your church today is graduation Sunday. So part of our service today at both campuses will be honoring our high school graduates. We're very excited to be a part of that today. Also, we have coming up our first fruits offering for this coming month, for the month of, it's going to be going into the month of June. We are collecting size four and five diapers. When we talked to the Neverloan Food Pantry this week, they said that's what they are most in need of right now, is diapers and wipes and that kind of thing. You can bring those things to the altar on Sunday mornings, or as someone has already done, drop them off on my front porch, which I had some friends who were just like, why do you have diapers? I was like, they're not for my kids. Unless I don't know some, no, we're good. Okay, we're good. I checked, <laughs> verified, we're good. They are for the Neverland Food Pantry. We also have coming up tonight is a hymn sing down at the Marietta campus. That's from 5 till 6 p.m. That's uh, going on, that's going to be, I, if it's really hot this afternoon, I think they're going to move it inside. But if not, if it's, if it's a pleasant day, it'll be outside out in the in the uh, out behind the uh, pavilion area you're welcome to come along and sing hymns pastor nate and our very own greg allen who's back there on guitar this morning and shannon hensley will be leading that this evening i welcome you to come and be a part of that also praise rocks is back this year which we're very excited about yes yes <laughs> and the round of applause yes uh, Praise Rocks, the signups are going on still. You can find more info at LegacyChurchGA.com. This is our summer fine arts program uh, for children. It is amazing, and it takes a lot of volunteers and a lot of effort to make it happen, and that's going to be happening in just a couple of weeks, June the 14th through the 18th. And finally, Youth Camp is happening this year, too. That also deserves a, yes, a little bit of applause. We're pumped to be back. We are pumped to be back. And uh, you can find out more details on that at LegacyChurchGA.com. Matter of fact, you can find out everything at LegacyChurchGA.com, but you can also download the Legacy app. You can watch our services. You can watch, furthermore, our podcast about the, service, uh, about the previous Sunday sermons. You can donate, and you can sign up for prayer requests and everything else that's going on in the life of your church there at LegacyChurchGA.com. Now, this morning, we are, like I said, we are celebrating our, our seniors today who are graduating, and, but also today is the first Sunday of Pentecost. That is the day that we celebrate Jesus' ascension into the heavens and then the Holy Spirit coming down on his people. So this is a special Sunday in the life of the church. If y'all will stand with me as Jesse prays for us this morning, and we will start our worship service together. Thank you, Pastor. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. We thank you for this day. Just to imagine, imagine what you've done for us. Lord, let us have this day that you have given us one more. Let us have this day to celebrate you. In all the celebrations of graduations, birthdays, weddings, just all this wonderful stuff that's going on, Lord, let us put our eyes on the positivity that you've given us but let us know that we're reflecting you, Father, in everything that we do. You are so good. You love us so much, Father. Let us just get an inkling of that today so we can turn and share it with everyone we come in contact with. In your precious name I pray. Amen. I'm excited. Who's ready to praise?
Father, thank you, Jesus, because here we go. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, and if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life, there's a better life. You got pain, he's a pain taker. You feel lost, he's a way maker. You need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, well, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of Somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify. Here we go. we do this, we're going to go into this last song, and I just want to, I want to encourage everybody in this room, because I was having a discussion this morning about how we so easily let things push us down, and I don't want to sound like a cliche, but we let things get in our way, we let things destroy us and push us, 
to the point where we're just like, you're basically, everything that you're carrying that is negative and that is defeated, everybody you come in contact, you give that to. When that comes on you and you let that become part of who you are, every time you come in contact with somebody else, we're not reflecting Christ. We're reflecting that. And I need everyone in this room and everyone online that's hearing this, the same power, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives in you. Don't let that be just a song lyric. Know it. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives in us. And I, for one, today, when I walk out those doors, that I do every day, Lord, let me be changed a little bit today to reflect more of who you are. That's my prayer. I can see the waters raging at my feet. I can feel the breath of those surrounding me. I can hear the sound of nations rising up. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. I can walk.
Thank you, Jesus. Lord, let that not just be words. Let it not just be a song that we sing on Sunday because we're here at church. Let that be the resonance inside of us throughout the week. That that is the power that lives in us. We have accepted you, Jesus Christ, into our life to make us a different creation. And that power is there regardless of the battles and the walls and the spikes and the trauma and everything that will come against us. The same power lives in us. We have won the war. And we will be victorious. We will have victory. We live in victory. Oh, Father, today, open our hearts. Open our hearts. Make our hearts so soft. Lord, these are simple prayers. But we come to you because we only have this through you. As much as our effort can be put forth, it doesn't happen apart from you, Father. So, Lord, soften our hearts. Allow your word. Allow the realization of who you are and what you're doing every second of our life to become the most prominent thing in the front of our minds and our hearts to reflect you, Jesus, and who you are. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege of being the pastor here as well as uh, being one of the youth pastors at the moment to welcome you to the class of 2021 to the stage. Well, to the front of the stage. Now, we have a 
some of these faces, you're like, I don't know if I know them, because some of them are part of our virtual campus as well. So it's a new day and age. Uh, Jasmine May here is actually my next door neighbor. So everybody say hi to Jasmine. <laughs> Uh, they've attended here uh, for about two years, but have been part of our virtual campus uh, for the last year and a half. Jasmine is graduating from Sequoia while being dual enrolled at KSU. You're far, how far along? You're, oh, done, because uh, you're going off to Georgia Southern now. Yes, Jasmine's real smart and stuff. So <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, <laughs> and stuff. Yes. And she likes Jeeps, so she's automatically got stock in, in my world. But uh, uh, we're really proud of you, Jasmine, and you are going to do great things. Absolutely proud of you. <laughs> now you get to do the shake and the take. Very good. We practice that. We practice that. Now this is Tyler Kossel. It's appropriate to applaud. <laughs> Tyler is graduating from Woodstock High School and is going to go to the University of Georgia to be a bulldog. Not that I'm biased about that in the least little bit. Uh, Tyler, you were born and raised in this church. This is, this is your church family from day one, right? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. We're very proud of you, Tyler. Very proud of you. Get up. Now... These two gentlemen on the end are slightly different story. These are both homeschool guys. This is their graduation. So when we applaud, we applaud big. Got it? But not yet. Pause. So, Jeff, if you'll help me here. Yeah. I'm going to hand you diplomas. Thank you. Now I have to read out because uh, I get to be the guy who, uh, who graduates the two of you. Isn't that right? That's kind of cool. So Jacob Lohman was born and began attending, it's good to know that he was born, I like that, he was born, but he began attending Legacy Church at, at the age of two weeks old. He was dedicated in this church in spring of 20, uh, 2004, and Jacob was, accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior and was baptized uh, at Legacy at the age of four by Pastors Timor and Pastor Nate. He grew up in Treasure Town, attending Iwana in Sunday school, and has gone on to be a leader in the youth group, attending mission trips and youth events. Today, he is standing before you as another milestone as he graduates from the Loman Homeschool Academy, which an awful lot of people have, uh, beyond the Lomans have attended the Loman Homeschool Academy. Jacob Lohman has been homeschooled since the age of three, which included preschool all the way through his 12th grade year of high school. He's also been dual enrolled at Tacoa Falls College for the last three years and has 30 credit hours of college credit already. Jacob is graduating today with the honor of magna cum laude with a 3.7 cumulative grade point average. He's plans to, he plans to work full time to go on the South Dakota mission trip this summer, and then he will move to Virginia to apprentice under his uncle and become a Nissan master mechanic. Ladies and gentlemen, we present his diploma to Jacob Lohman today. Oh, oh, and I will shake your hand too. Now, Brian Ash here on the end was born in the Legacy Church into 2002. He was dedicated by his parents and the church members in 2003. He was, when he was five years old, he accepted Jesus as his Savior and was baptized at Legacy. He grew up in the church, attending Treasure Town in Awanas. He went on to be a leader in the youth group while attending youth retreats and events. Uh, Bryant has met another milestone today as he has graduated his homeschool and earns his high school diploma. Bryant has been homeschooled since the age of five all the way through the 12th grade. He's graduating with honors with a 3.7 uh, magnum cum laude grade point average. His post-high school plans are to attend Kennesaw State University and pursue a degree in biology, and then he will go on to pursue a degree in dermatology. Congratulations, Bryant. Congratulations. Let's give it up for the class of 2021. <laughs> yes, and, and the homeschoolers can now move their tassels over. That's right. Feel free to throw your cap. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, class of 2021. Let's give it up. Can we give them a standing of, of ovation? Very good. Yeah. And y'all are now dismissed because I know how much you love wearing the cap and gown. It is the highlight of your day. <laughs> No, we're very proud of our, uh, we are very proud of our, 
There it is. Good. Isn't that bad when the pastor can't find his sermon? Is that bad? <laughs> Wandering around? <laughs> Just wing it, Brent. <laughs> I heard that. Thank you. We, did, we weren't able to do a graduation ceremony last year uh, and be a part of that, but it is awesome to be back in the house of the Lord and be able to celebrate with our graduates. At the end of my message today, you're going to see me walk out that back door because we're also doing the same graduation ceremony for all of our Marietta graduates today as well. Now, before I dive into the Word of God and before I dive into the message this morning, I have a special thing I'd like y'all to celebrate with me. Uh, my mom is actually here this morning. If you know what's been going on in the life of our family. So I promise I wouldn't make her walk up on the stage or anything like that, but, I, but I'm just excited that mom is, is there on the second row and gets to, celebrate, uh, gets to celebrate here at the church with us this morning. Uh, when I was a kid... My dad would take me spelunking, which is a fancy word for caving. Now, caving basically involved my dad and my uncle looking around and finding a hole in the ground and thinking, we can put kids through that. We can just shove a kid and see where it goes. I want to tell you that it was different than that, but it's pretty accurate. More than once, dad would say, hey, see if you can fit up there. And I'm like, I can. He's like, you'll be all right. Just wiggle. We'll get you back out. We would go caving, and basically there was two kinds of caves that we would find. We would find what they call wet caves, which are caves that are still growing. And they had mud and animals and all kinds of fun stuff, sometimes water up to our waist. And some of them were small that you, know, you, that you could be in and out of it in 10 minutes. And some of them were seven or eight miles long, and that's just the parts that they had mapped. They had no idea how far they really, really went. Now, some of the other caves had been used for generations by the people who lived in that area as a place where they got rid of their garbage. So we would find bottles and cans and stuff from, from the 1920s and the 1930s and all this stuff. One time we found a part of a car that had all been shoved down in this cave. And this was just something that we did when I was a kid, and it was part of my growing up was to spend time in caves with my uncle and my dad. Now, I will tell you, one of the most startling things about going inside of a cave is how dark it truly is. If you've ever been in a cave, you know this, that when you turn off whatever light source you're using, it is so dark you can't see the hand in front of your face. You would never know if someone was about to pop you on the nose. You would never see it coming. You would never know it. But I'll tell you what, even like the watch, even like the hands on your watch, if they glow a little bit, in a cave, that looks really, really dark bright because it doesn't take much light to pierce the darkness it doesn't take much light at all to change the whole perspective of a dark place now today is pentecost sunday as i told you a little while ago the day we we celebrate it's the 50 days after easter normally the seventh sunday after easter and it's the day that we celebrate when the holy spirit came down on the disciples and jesus ascended into heaven and he sent out his disciples to do one thing he sent them out to build the kingdom, to change the world, to share that gospel, to take a dark place and to add a little bit of light. As I just described, it doesn't take much when that dark kind of engulfs you and that dark is all surrounding you and it's everywhere in your shape and form, but yet just a little bit of light can change everything. Today, we're in the series we're in, we're, we're, it's called The Questions That We Ask. And the question that we are asking today is, why must we share the gospel? Why must we share the gospel? Now, this was not a suggestion that Jesus gave us in, right before he ascended. He talked to the disciples. He didn't give them a suggestion. He gave them a command. He says, in, and we see this in Matthew chapter 28, that Jesus came and spoke to them. He says, I've received all authority in heaven and on earth. And therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. That word command is important. L look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. This wasn't a suggestion that, oh, we need to do this to build our churches. This wasn't a suggestion that we need to do this just because it would be a good thing. No, this was a command from Christ himself to the disciples and to all of us that we must go out and be that light in a dark place to share the gospel in a big way because 
of the consequences. That if it doesn't happen, what happens to the people? We are all born into our original sin. We have this deep sinful nature. And that sinful nature, if not stopped by the love of Jesus Christ and a knowledge of him, leads to one place. It leads to an eternity in hell. That's the problem. Our sinful nature will drive us straight to hell. But the solution is Jesus Christ. Christ has always been the answer, and it's always been the answer for us to share that good news with everyone that we meet. Look what it says in Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 8. It says, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who, con who are controlled by the Holy Spirit thinks about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never obeyed God's laws and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. Y'all, we share the gospel so that we can turn people away from their sinful nature and get them to a place where they are walking hands in hands with Jesus. A couple of weeks ago, I was eating, uh, not a couple weeks ago, a week ago, I was eating at Waffle House for school with my beautiful daughter. And we're sitting there finishing up. We're about to get her to school so she's not late. And the lady who's working the, the checkout counter as I'm handing her my ticket says, you know, you guys were just talking back and forth. I so enjoyed listening to you two talk. I was like, thanks, that's my kid. She figured that part out for herself. And then she was like, what do you do for a living? And y'all, when I'm asked that question, I have to admit sometimes I play a game with it. I mean, honestly, because if I tell instantly people that I'm a pastor, you know what normally happens? They stop talking to me. They feel weird about it. So I told her, I, well, I keep people from burning. That's what I do. And she's like, oh, you're a fireman. No, I'm not a fireman. I said, well, I, technically I sell fire insurance. And she's like, oh, you're an insurance agent. And Sammy's like, he's a pastor. He's just messing with you. She's like, I've never heard it that way. But yet, that's what, that's what we do, isn't it? We're selling insurance fire insurance. We're keeping people from burning. That's why it's so important to share the gospel. That's why it's so important to share with everyone you, you meet. Because of the destructive nature of sin will eat you out from the inside and it'll affect everything in your life if you let it. Do y'all know how a worm gets into an apple? Have you ever researched that? Do you know that a worm gets into an apple not by coming through the skin of the apple and going inside? The worm is actually planted by the fly or whatever, on the blossom of the apple, way before it's a fruit. And then it, it grows, it grows. When you find a worm inside of an apple, that's why if you've ever bitten into an apple and you found a worm, you're like, how did it get in there? It's because it's been in there since day one. It was there the whole time. Sin is no different. If our sin starts deep inside of our hearts and we never do anything about it, it will grow and it will consume and it will take over everything in your life. Just like that worm, it begins in the heart and works its way out through the, a person's words and their thoughts and then their actions and then everything else in their world. Y'all, if we don't share the gospel, and I mean we, not just pastors and people who work in the church, I mean we. If we don't share the gospel we are letting people die an eternal death. And that's not it. That's, not, that's a problem. That is a problem we should be all concerned about. We should be all concerned about our fellow, our fellow men and women. We should all be concerned about our kids. We should be concerned about the people in our world who we meet, that if they don't know Jesus the way that I'm hoping that you know Jesus, or if you don't know Jesus the way that I'm talking about, this is for you. This is for you. This is a problem. If we look in the book of Revelation, look in chapter 20, it describes a little bit about what this is going to look like. It says, I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it, and the earth and the sky fled from his presence, but they now found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were open, including the book of life. And the, and the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its death, 
and, the, and death and the grave gave up their dead. And all were judged according to their deeds. And then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. And anyone whose name is not, was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Now, I've had a, an awful lot of conversations with non-Christians over the years who were like, if God loves us so much, then why would he create, why would he allow, why would he let anyone burn in a lake of fire? Why would he let anyone die that death? Now, the truth is, it's God's love that actually makes hell kind of necessary. Now, I say this because I, I was studying a, a, a book by E.L. Mascal, who was a Christian theologian and author back in the 1860s. He says that God's love is not compatible, uh, excuse me, it said that, uh, <laughs> He says, hell is not compatible with God's love. It's a direct consequence of it. He, that was kind of his way of stressing that the very fact that God who loves us is, and he respects our decisions. He loves us and he respects our decisions. He does not force his love on us. To force his love on us would be to commit a type of assault. He doesn't do that. He offers the love and then you have a choice whether or not to take it. He lets you decide. He loves you and he encourages that response, but yet he lets you decide. He pursues you and he encourages that response, but yet he lets you decide. He urges you and he encourages that response, but yet he lets you decide. He doesn't force us because he respects us, but the truth is he wants us to accept it and then he wants to, us to share it because if he doesn't, the consequence for not knowing that love is hell. And we probably don't talk about that near enough in Christian communities. We probably don't talk about that near enough in our own families, that how important it is for us to live a life walking with God. And I'll tell you what, God knows about it. God plans it. God looks at us and says, you are the best case scenario. Y'all are his plan of how the gospel will be shared. Honestly, we're the only plan. Do you know how simple that makes the decision? When the option is one or that, or wait, one and one, that's the only option. Wait, the decision becomes real easy. We are the best plan. We as children of God have to tell other people about how, he good, how good he is in our lives. It pleases him. It's a beautiful thing for us to tell. I was talking with our young adult class earlier this week, and we're sitting around outside in my house, and we've got a little fire pit out there, and we're just talking about life, and we're talking about what, what God looks like in our world. And the truth is, when they were like, well, there's, there's people who will say this against the Bible or say this against religion and everything, I was like, yes, but no one can speak against something that is yours. No one can speak against what God has done in your life. That's called your testimony. No one can say anything about what God has done in your life personally because it happened to you and you know it to be true. And you share that with other people. A personal testimony can change everything because the simple reality is if God is so good, then why aren't we telling everybody about it? Why would we not want to share the good news? Y'all, if you go to a new restaurant and you like the food, are you willing to tell somebody else about it? Yes, you will. If you bought a new car and you're like, this is the best car ever, you may put that on Facebook. You'll put it on your Instagram. You may make a TikTok about it. I don't know. If you have a great experience somewhere, you're going to tell the whole world about it, how great this is. But yet, for the God who has saved you and forgives you and who loves you unconditionally, we're awful quiet, aren't we? Well, I don't want to offend anybody. Y'all, I think it's a time we started offending people. I think it's time we said, no, you know what? If I'll tell somebody how really good this meal I had was, then I need to tell them also how really good my God is. Y'all, you should be on fire for your church. You should be on fire for your God. You should be telling everybody you meet about how great it is to know your Lord and Savior. And if you love your church family, you should be telling them about that too. You want to know how churches get people in the seats? It's I mean, we can advertise and stuff like that, but most of the time it's from someone saying, hey, this is my church, you're welcome there, come on. I did a wedding last summer for a friend who, uh, who uh, we met by going to a Braves game with the youth group. She was offered an extra ticket, she didn't know who the church was, didn't know anything about us, not at all. 
but it gave us an opportunity to talk to her, which then became her coming to, uh, to a youth group event, and that became her coming to more youth group events, and that became her becoming a youth intern, and then later, later in life, she got baptized, and then a few, last summer, I got to go and marry her to her, her dream guy, and they're, they're expecting their first kid now. All of that happened because she made the critical mistake of sitting next to me at a Braves game because I wanted to know about her and I wanted to tell her about my Jesus, my relationship with him because I wanted her to have the same relationship. Y'all, a church that is not all about evangelism is a contradiction in terms. A church has to be about evangelism because we're stopping people from burning. That's how it works. Now look what it says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. It says, Jesus called out to them and he said, come, follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. Now the late Sam Shoemaker, who was an Episcopalian bishop, kind of summed it up this way. He said, in the Great Commission, the Lord has called us to be like Peter, fishers of men. But for most churches over the years... We've turned that commission around. He said that we've become merely keepers of the aquarium. That sometimes we take a few fish from over here and, oh, they don't like this aquarium anymore, so we put them over here and then maybe we take some of those fish from that aquarium and we stick them back over here in ours. But we're not actually out there fishing. Y'all, we need to be fishers of people. That's what that scripture looks like. We break that thing down. We break that scripture down. It says that we should come follow and then we have to go you got to come to know jesus for yourself because you can't give away what you don't have you've got to follow him in your daily life because you can't go out into a world without the armor of god protecting you and his holy spirit guiding you through and then you've got to be willing to go and sometimes that's next door sometimes that's across the street sometimes that's across the world wherever god tells you to go you've got to be willing to go but first you've got to come to know him follow him, then you go. Y'all, he was telling us to be fishers of people. Now, the cool thing about fishing with God and when you're fishing with people, the worst thing about fishing for me is if I catch the fish, especially if I'm fishing with Scott, my son, he wants to do what? Keep it. And then he wants to eat it. I hate cleaning fish. It is not what I do well. I'm not good at it. I don't like it. My dog is permanently traumatized because I had a bucket of bass in our kitchen one night and a fish flopped out and the dog basically ran away for days. She didn't know how to handle this thing flopping around on the floor. I hate cleaning fish. But when you fish for people, you don't clean them. That's what Jesus does. He just told you to bring them in. Cast the nets. Be that person. Honestly, it's our job to go out and cast the nets, be that person who has that conversation and then is willing not only to get to know the person, but then to say, have you heard about Jesus? Because y'all, it's called the good news for a reason. Nobody likes bad news, but it's good news. A good news that you don't have to spend an eternity in hell. Good news that you don't have to go through life alone. Good news that God will be with you every step of the way way no matter what it is that's the good news now how do we do all this i want you to look at romans chapter one because we do this through prayers through actions in our very lives it says for i am not ashamed of this good news about christ it is the power of god at work saving everyone who believes the jew first and also the gentile the simple and most effective way people will find your faith and will people will see your faith the simple and most effective way is through the power of prayer and then the power of how you treat them and then the very life that you live. Your actions, your kindness should be an example to others of how good God is in your life and your prayer life should reflect that. I want, to, I want you to go to 1 Peter with me this morning, chapter 3. It says we have to, instead you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks you about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. That's important. Do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. And then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. 
Y'all, if we tr- the, Jesus is the living water, right? Right? We agree with that? Yes? If you try to shove water down someone's throat who doesn't want it, what's that called? Yes. You said it, not me. It's torture. It's torture. Y'all, it says it right here in the scripture. This isn't Pastor Brent. This is the word of God. You do this in a gentle and respectful way. Share your life, share your faith, and do this in a respectful and gentle way. Honestly, y'all, that's a life that exemplifies the gospel. That's a life that changes other people's lives. That's a life that keeps people from burning in an eternity in hell. Is when we share the gospel in a gentle and respectful way, but yet we're not afraid to tell why we have hope. So that is my prayer for you today, church. That not only do you have hope, but that you will share it with anyone you encounter. And if they ask you why you have so much hope, even when things are bad, you can go, let me tell you about Jesus and what he's done in my life. Amen? Y'all, that's why we must share the gospel. Because seeing Christ through us, people will want to know Christ's heart for themselves. If we're willing to tell people about a restaurant that we like, we should also be willing to tell them about the the person who saved our very lives and forgives us for everything that we've done. Amen? Now, here at Legacy Church, we celebrate communion at the end of services. If you're within the sound of my voice and you know Jesus as your personal Savior, I encourage you to join us at at God's table this morning. If uh, if If the message has changed in your heart, if you need to speak to someone afterwards, I encourage you to talk to one of our elders here or one of our pastors here. Uh, also, folks, don't let yourself walk out of here thinking, okay, he wasn't talking to me. I am. I'm talking to every single one of you. Your job is to share the gospel. Your job is to change the kingdom. Your job is to keep people from burning. Your job is to come, follow, and go. Amen? We all stand with me as we celebrate communion together? Father God, I just thank you for the opportunity you have for us to to hear your word, to know how good you are and how that no matter what we are going through, you are there with us. You promise us that that we are to go out and make disciples of all the nations, but you also promise us that you will be with us every step of the way, and we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for a church that can gather together not only to celebrate milestones in, in young people's lives and to see these folks who have grown up in this church graduate and go off to college, but yet, Lord, we also celebrate your spirit coming down and ascending on to us and allowing us to go out and do your work around the world. Lord, what an awesome way to celebrate our Sunday. Awesome way to celebrate our Sunday. Lord, we just thank you for that. I thank you for your son, Jesus, who took a, a loaf of bread on the night in the upper room and he broke it and said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took a cup and said, this is my blood, the new covenant given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, we thank you for that sacrifice on the cross today. And if someone is in this room this morning and they need to know you deep inside their heart, I encourage them, Lord, to pray that prayer that, Lord, I need you every day of my life. I need you in my heart. I need you to forgive my sins. I need to know you deeper so that I can go and tell more people about how good you are to me. I pray if you prayed that prayer this morning that you come and you take communion this morning, you know that you are a changed person. For all the rest of us who who praise your name every Sunday, Lord, we just give it all up to you and give you all the glory. Amen. This is the body. This is the blood. Oh
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, every Sunday we take communion together as a church. Not as a routine. Not as just another thing to do for Sunday. But Lord, we do it in remembrance that it'll never leave us the fact, the act of what you did. We will never forget. Lord, let us be mirrors today. Let us reflect you, Father, in everything we do. Lord, in your precious name, thank you for today's service, Lord. I just pray that these words just imprint on us. Imprint on us, Father, more so today. Just a little bit. Change us just a little bit. In your precious name we pray, Father. Amen. Thank you for this day. I hope you guys have a wonderful day today. Spend today reflecting Him. Look for the opportunities. Be hungry for it. Be hungry for it. And before you go today, if you guys want to give, we have the box, obviously, the little stand in the back where you can drop it off. Or you can also give through our texting at 77977legacychurchga.com. I just want you guys to know that I love you. I love this family. And every day that we come together to worship him and to lift him up, it makes me happy. It brings joy to my life. And I hope and pray that today you guys spend it reflecting who he is. Have a great day. <laughs>